So what do I know? I know based on experience, and by the way, you can rely on technical experience and that is not a bias. A bias is something that doesn't have a technical sound basis, factual basis, okay? So when I read a sentence and I know it is English, just because I've read it before, it doesn't become a bias, a bias statement. It is really English because it's factually accurate. So in the same way, because I have seen the intercepts, I can see that it's PGP based, okay? Some implementation of PGP. But I also know that PGP supports both symmetric and asymmetric forms of encryption. Now, just because 99% of the cases PGP is used for asymmetric encryption, doesn't automatically, should not bias me to think that this is also uh, a product of asymmetric encryption. Because if you look at sample which is encrypted using symmetric key encryption and asymmetric key encryption, they look exactly the same. Of course, they're not the same, but they look the same. They are structurally, statistically, and um, uh, yeah, structurally and statistically, morphologically, very, very similar to each other. You won't be able to distinguish merely by looking at the samples. I also know, based on the experience, and this is where the bias trap can you can fall into. I also know that from my experience of having analyzed hundreds of malware samples, that RATs generally use sophisticated RATs, or rather, RATs. First of all, RATs that use encryption, like from uh, Mankey stock are generally more sophisticated than RATs that don't. So by, by very nature, they, we call them sophisticated RATs because they go to the extra length of using encryption to uh, not just obfuscate, not just encode traffic, but actually encrypt it. So there's a huge difference between encoding or obfuscating and encrypting something. Encryption is foolproof, obfuscation and encoding is not. Just UU encoding traffic, you can simply reverse uh, and you can get back the original uh, data. But PGP, it's not that simple, right? So just because most PG, uh, RAT implementations like Cybergate, Poison Ivy, Bifrose, um, and several others use, uh, you know, Game Overs use Trojan, most of them use PGP-based encryption, especially when they are, uh, we are talking about variants that do cyber espionage. There are many that are financial, you know, they do, you know, they hijack online banking accounts and so on and so forth. But even then, many of them use, uh, ex for exfiltrating data, they use PGP, right? So just because they use public key, that is asymmetric key, doesn't mean that this one is also likely to use that. It is, it just means it's statistically more likely to use it, but not factually. It, we don't know it as a fact yet. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to reserve my opinion. Because if you make a mistake of assuming something which is mere speculation at this point, you're going to go down an entirely different path and you're not going to reach the correct conclusion. And in fact, let's stop there. At point number three, if you assume that is uh, a fact, that it is using public key, then we might as well give up. Because, you know, its situation is hopeless for most of us, for the, most, the majority of the, the, you know, the population. So, at the same time, let's not assume things are more complex than they need to be. You know, why am I saying uh, let's not be biased? Is because not all people think alike. And that goes back to this first principles of simplicity. Human, be human beings, their very nature is to seek the path of least resistance. Or you can seek the happy path. So somewhere where they go, where they, are not, they face the least resistance. No one intentionally, and this goes back to the Freudian Eid, where no one intentionally wants to uh, do anything that, uh, that is a threat to themselves or to the threat of the propagation of their own progeny. And by causing a threat to yourself, you're in effect, uh, you know, causing a threat to the very survival of that species. So the Darwinian evolution says that people don't tend to do things that are unnecessarily complex or difficult. People try to make their life simpler, not more difficult. Okay, so that is where that Mar Marcus Aurelius uh, principle is very important. And which is why it is important to ask a very unlikely scenario also, the question is what if the rat is not using public key cryptography? It is using PGP, but what is using a much simpler form of cryptography, which is symmetric key? Can we then do something about it? And the answer, unfortunately, is still no. <laughs> because a very simple fact, no keys equals no plain text. Right? So at this point, I'm very depressed. I'm a few beers down, um, a few hours into the night, and I'm like, okay, this is hopeless. Might as well go to sleep. But let's take a look at the, uh, the visual characteristics. You know, when technology fails you, start um, relying on your other senses. Your sense of touch, your sense of 
sight. So in this case, the sense of sight, by the way, turned out to be very important. Um, so here is how. So what did I have with me? I had six samples. Now I have made, uh, I have abstracted some of the details to make them simpler for us to understand, right? Those samples were not actually called that. Those samples were called by some arbitrary names because it was auto generating a random sequence of alphanumeric characters as a name. So I'm not going to use that to confuse you. So let's call these samples and this is the temporal order in which they were received or sent rather, okay, from the infected system to the CNC. So first 000.txt.asc was sent, followed by ABC, followed by 111, followed by XYZ finally. So these are the samples that were given to me, right? So that was the temporal order. That's increasing time from left to right. So message one was possibly, most likely PGP encrypted, 000, then there's ABC, then 111, PQR, 222, and XYZ, right? Now. This is what every message looked like, okay? The actual amount of content varied in between, but this is what it looked like. Begin PGP message, end PGP message. Some headers there, version, comment, blah, blah, that was different because I have generated these on my own system. Uh, but essentially, everything else is exactly the way it was. The content was different because I have created my own files here because those files, obviously, if somebody else is proprietary, you know, personally identifiable information, right? So this is what actually it looks like when you encrypt a message using PGP. Whether a file or email, doesn't matter, any data. Okay, now let's focus our attention on the keys themselves, which are really required to actually decrypt this message. What do the keys look like? The keys actually look very, very similar. They look very similar to the PGP messages. The header and the footer is different. You have begin PGP public, Begin PGP public key block and PGP public key block. Begin PGP secret key or private key block and end PGP private key block with the junk in between, right? Um, so this is what it looks like. So it's a long one. This is a 2048-bit RSA key. Uh, this is the private key, the secret key, which should not be given to anybody else, right? But if you are using symmetric key, you will use this key to encrypt and decrypt. Okay, which is why this is absolutely unsuitable for uh, encrypting email which is sent between parties over an untrusted uh, communication channel like the internet, right? Which is where the key exchange comes in, which is why you actually, you, you exchange the public portion of the key <coughs> and then you preserve the secret component with you in your own keyring and then use the secret component to de decrypt and the public component of the other party to encrypt. Similarly, you use your private key to sign and you use, the other party uses the public part of your private key to verify that it is really you that has sent the email. But we are not going to focus on, because this scenario did not deal with any signing of messages. Actually, it was, it was signed also, but I'm going to ignore the signing portion of it, right? So it starts like that, begin PGP private key block and PGP private key block. This tells you that this is a secret key, okay? Now let's switch to the live environment because I'm going to actually show you exactly these things in, because uh, I've been talking a lot. Let's exit the show for now. So, uh, what are we actually, let me just, Let's first learn how to generate it so that we understand the mechanics of how it is done. So for that, you know, I have a cheat sheet. I have a code cheat sheet over here. Okay. That's it. Very soon. Not a little bit. Um, 
Right, so generating a public and private key. So, first of all, okay, you know what, I'm going to skip this part because otherwise it's just going to be a lot of education with, uh, I'm going to come to the, uh, the impressive part yet. So, anyway, so you generate a public key at a command line by doing gpg minus minus gen key. It goes through an interactive process, asks you what is your email ID, what is your name, blah, 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 and then it will create a key. By the way, it is by no means only required for emails, okay? You can use it to enter files also. But you need something uniquely identifies you because a lot of people can be searching the other, but there is only one email address, uh, sakdio.yahoo at gmail.com. There cannot be two of those for one particular mail domain anyway. So, and similarly, you can, once you have created a key, it goes to your key ring. It's like your key ring, it has two sub key rings, one, is, one stores the secret keys and one stores uh, the public keys and so on. Now, inside that, uh, once you have a key, it's in a binary format. Okay? If I want to exchange my public key to you, I don't want to send you the binary version of the key. I could, but then probably Gmail or Yahoo is going to block it because it's going to be an unknown format. It's probably going to block it. So what we do is we create an ASCII armor version. So we actually convert that binary format into an alphanumeric format, ASCII text format. And that is called the ASCII armor. And to create, so if you want to export a key, that is called exporting a key from the binary to the ASCII version. And for that, we use something called GPG minus minus export secret key. Now, by the way, the reason why I'm focusing on exporting a secret key here, normally you would never export a secret key. Unless you are porting from one system to another system and you want to carry your keys with you. Okay, or you want to, the key is currently on your disk and now you want it to be on a USB token uh, storage. You may want to do that or you may want to back up your key. That's the only reason why you would do that. But in the, because you're talking about symmetric key encryption, or at least that's my hypothesis is that this could be symmetric form of encryption. So I'm going to, that's the command. And what happens is output file contains the private key. Okay? And then to encrypt a file with a symmetric key, all you have to do is say gpg minus c is to is symmetric form of encryption. Minus e needs to encrypt. So use encryption, but use symmetric form. And minus A means the output encrypted file, don't store it as binary, store it as a ASCII text file. So that it appears in that begin PGP format, end PGP format. Binary format is not going to look like, look like that. It's not going to be hexadecimal uh, shit all over the place. And then to decrypt the file, you'll simply say GPG minus D. Now this does something very deceptively uh, clever. What it does is first finds out, uh, do you is it symmetric key or asymmetric key encryption that was used to encrypt that file? If it is symmetric key, do I, in the key ring, where the file is to be decrypted, does it have that secret key so I can decrypt it? If it is asymmetric key, do you have the public key, or rather, sorry, the private key whose matching public key was used to encrypt that file? And if it doesn't find that file, or if it doesn't find the key, either the secret key or the uh, private key of the recipient, it will report saying that no key was found or no, or no, no matching key was found and it will not decrypt it. If it does find it, it's going to ask you for a passphrase. And that is the shared secret. And then you give the passphrase to unlock the key, the key will then decrypt the file and you will get back to play text. Right? No, you can choose an output file name, otherwise it simply adds a .asc to the extension. So the, which is why you saw this abc.exe.asc. So what happens essentially is, uh, if I say, okay, I have a plain text file, I will show you an example. You can call it anything you like, right? So, okay. Now, once again, switch back to the problem at hand. Don't know what the ciphertext finds keys. Let's look at. See, here's the thing. Here are the facts that I have noted. I have six messages. All six appear to be encrypted with PGP. Whether it's symmetric or asymmetric, I do not know. If it's asymmetric, I might as well throw myself off the uh, building. If it is symmetric, there is some hope, although I, I'm not sure exactly how. But I'm, I'm you know, looking for a foothold, right? So let's assume it is let's assume it's symmetric. I also know that even if it is symmetric, I need the keys. Without the keys, I cannot decrypt, right? Then let me assume that once, so if that is the, if that is what I'm working under, and I have six messages, no keys, let me assume that actually it is not true that there are no keys. How? A normal human being would require keys. So what if 
I looked at the messages more closely. Okay. And then I started looking at the messages more closely. And this is exactly what happened. I mean, I know from here on it sounds like a surreal almost. I started looking at the messages one by one. And I actually used, I bought, went to the stationery store and bought a ruler. A 20 rupees ruler, a uh, plastic one. And then I had a 19 or 21 inch screen. And then I started looking at the headers, starting with the headers all the way to the footer. Right? And I'm going to show you one example. Anybody notice anything wrong with this file? This is one of the intercepts, let's assume. Let me see how many of you are. <laughs> have a huh? No, no, forget the file name. Uh, let's assume that it has the original file name, the content. No, 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 there is end also. Oh, sorry, I cannot. <laughs> it's, it's long, so. There is an end also. See, end is there, right? Begin is also there. Version and comment comes first. No, that is the same. If I show you other files also. I, by the way, trust me when I say because I'm trying to, in the spirit of time, uh, you can always come back later on and check everything. So, this is a smaller one, this is a bigger No, but that's just because the content may have been bigger, right? <laughs> no, but that you're, you're right. I mean, this is a visual, this is called spatial analysis. I'm actually doing a visual spatial analysis of the file. I'm not doing a technical analysis at all. Does anybody notice? Okay, I'm going to put another file here so that you can compare and contrast, okay? Just to make it simpler. Okay. okay. I'm going to put these two. Look at this one. Okay, it's like the doctor asking you which one is uh, which one is clearer, right? <laughs> and this one, acute test. This one and this one. Observe that I am not focusing on end. You know, in the first one, you cannot even see the end PHP work, right? The end PHP message. But but I'm not even bothering with that. That itself is a clue. So that means my attention is somewhere else. Lines are not facing. The last line. Spacing and begin. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Who said there's no spacing? What, what did you say? There's different amount of spacing in the header of begin PGP message. Exactly. So if you notice there, here between the dash and the B, there is no white space. Right? Now look here. In the dash and the B, there is an extra white space. What does that tell you? It's not a valid well, well, yeah. well, yeah. well, yeah. well, yeah. well, yeah. header. Somebody has doctored the header. Yes. Why would somebody doctor a P PGP message header? Maybe that is the case. So it's like a I already told you, they'll give you a clue that keys and messages look very similar, except the headers. To, to differentiate between the key and the encrypted file. So uh, in the initial, mm -hmm. thing, like you said, a, 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 a uh, one to one to, so one of the file is the key and other file is the text. You are exactly on the right track. Because this told me that somebody had doctored the header. Now whether this was an automated process that introduced a glitch or whether it was a human being doing it, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, it could be anything. We, see, again, we, let's not assume because we don't know, right? We, uh, we have no idea what happened on the infected system side. Whether somebody was actually sending this data manually or whether it was done automatically. But one thing we do know, and perhaps I was just plain lucky, that there is an extra blank space between the dash and the B, right? Now, why would I do that? If I wanted to disguise a key like a message. Because instead of sending three keys and three messages, if I send six messages, the other party would be overwhelmed, just as it did in this particular case. You know that, oh, this is impossible, cannot be done, right? So let's assume that this is a working hypothesis, that let's assume that it is in fact, this could be a key. So then what do I do? I replace it with the header of the key. Okay? So I'm going to take you to that keys. Uh, go. Okay, so these are those files. 0, 0, 0, all the way up to xyz.txt, right? Okay? 
and then let's assume that 111.txt.asc. Okay, let's let me just check. Assuming it is symmetric key, I'm going to change that to to be a key. Let's actually test it whether it's really a key or not. And the way we would do that is by trying to import it as a key. It was, what was it? We change 111. One, one. This actual message was actually not a message at all. It was a key. And what does it decrypt? It decrypts the next message in the sequence. And let's see if that is true. Okay? So that's okay. one of one other of my hypotheses that the first first message is actually a key. The second message is a message encrypted with that symmetric key. The third message is again a key, which is why I have purposely named those files as 00011122, ABC, PQR, and XYZ. That wasn't the case earlier, just to kind of have helpful in new uh, memory aid. So, uh, so now that it is in, now that this particular uh, key is in my key ring, remember, just you have, without importing the key, you're not going to be able to decrypt the file. And then you do GBG minus D, and then you do uh, what's that? ABC. Oops, sorry. Remember, this assumes that the shared secret is known. Okay? In the case where we analyzed the data, the, the, guy, the guys were so cocksure that, uh, that nobody would be able to figure this scheme out that there was no such protection. Here I have deliberately protected it. Right? So I'm giving a simple passphrase here, and the decryption is finished. And this is the plain, plain text. There was received. Of course, it wasn't as simple as this that I knew automatically that the, the, the key frequency was just one, meaning that the key was, the lifespan of the key was just for one message. I had to try out. So what, what was the other thing that you noticed, by the way? There's another thing that is different about keys and messages. Uh, I'll show you again. There's one more important thing, there's a structural similarity. Uh, all keys share a common structural uh, similarity, whereas all messages share a common structural similarity. And that can be best seen when you look at the scheme. You see that this is actually a key, by the way. This was the one with the white space. 
it starts with the L capital Q capital Q, and most messages start with H Q, right? Uh, and while this may differ from implementation to implementation, all keys and all messages they share common traits. So one of the other things that we found, and this is something which is there in my next uh, slide, is so. Like I say, let's remove the offending white space. Let's transform the PGP message into a PGP key. Now attempt to import the potential key into PGP key ring. And we already did that, right? Just now. And it works. It actually imports the key. Means it recognizes it as a valid key. Otherwise, it would never have imported it as a key. And then, what did the key encrypt? You test out various values. Okay, it could be encrypted in the next five messages, three messages. Maybe it is just one key with all the messages encrypted with the same key. But normally, you wouldn't do that. You would always rotate the key. So in this case, it was one key, one message. And then verify, check if the key now becomes the next message in the transmission sequence, and yes, it does. That's what, what we checked. Now, this reconstruction, we can now, actually, with this analysis, we can now reconstruct what really happened. Right? And what really happened, apparently, seems to be that each message was encrypted with a different key. The key was transmitted prior to sending a message encrypted with that key. Right? The secret to share, uh, the, the, the shared secret was transmitted out of band. Usually what happens is somebody will SMS somebody else, like terrorists often use that as a code book. They share a code book beforehand, and then they will start to uh, do a share, a share encrypted messages. The key was disguised as a PGP message simply by changing the header and footer. Unfortunately, there was one white space mistake that was done which caused this error to get detected, this particular uh, anomaly to get detected. And why did this seemingly naive and very simplistic strategy work? I mean, why do you think it worked? I mean, I've come down to these three, uh, three reasons. Human beings, especially technologists like us, we often overcomplexify things rather than oversimplify things. We also often give too much credit to our adversaries. And adversaries may not be as intelligent and as sophisticated as you might think. Or even if they are, they may not use that sophistication all the time because of number two, which is humans are often lazy and will do more than will not do more than they need to achieve their objectives. And finally, something that looks, behaves, smells, eats, walks, moves like an elephant is actually an elephant. So don't give it too much credit for being something else than it is. And, you know, unless proven otherwise. So once again, leaving you with the first principles. Although, this was based purely on simplicity. There was one small mistake that led to the uh, detection of this scheme or strategy of encryption of sending a secure message, so far secure message. <coughs> and none of this, you know, would have been possible. This analysis is not incumbent on the sophistication of the hardware or how much money you spent on it or how many people you throw at it, right? It is simply, you know, going to the store to buy a ruler, you know, very, very literally. Uh, and then checking the, you know, checking the white space. And, and, and he saw it right there on the screen from such, so, such a far distance away. It was possible to detect that white space and say, okay, so this looks odd. So hopefully you enjoyed it to a certain extent.